These basic flaws in how you hold the golf club can severely damage your golf game and stop you shooting the scores that you deserve to shoot. Hi everyone, I'm James and welcome back to Get Good at Golf. In today's video I'm going to show you how to grip the club and how making these simple mistakes can severely harm your chances of playing good golf. So guys, we all know that to hold the club there are more than one way to skin a cat. There's more than one way to do it. You may have the baseball grip, you may have the interlock grip, you may have the overlock grip. All these are fine, I have no problem with any of those, but there's a few things we need to make sure we do, a few boxes we need to tick to make sure we can A, strike the clubs properly. This is all the clubs in the bag. You'll see here, I've got wedges, I've got irons, I've got drivers. A little bit of a mess actually, but this is how I like to work. Sorry Chris, I know you're a little bit neater than I am, but we need to make sure we do this to make sure we strike the clubs properly, to make sure we generate enough power, and also to make sure we hit the ball nice and straight. So I'm going to start with a wedge here and the big thing that I want to do is make sure that the grip pressure is okay. The grip pressure isn't too tight because if my grip pressure is really really tight and you can start to see the whites of my knuckles that's going to stop me being able to set the club properly. Even with a wedge I need to be able to let that club head flow on the way back and set it to a certain yardage. Say if I want to play a shot just 30 or 40 yards out here I need to be able to release that club nicely i need to make sure that's going to go in that go on and you'll see there with that strike i was able to get the distance that i want with wedges it's imperative we have good distance control the key with wedges is hitting it accurately is hitting it the same distance every time so i want to make sure i have a nice consistent grip pressure if i grip the club really really try and try and hit that same shot I can try and get it, but you see there that's come up short. I've also taken a really, really steep divot there. That means that I'm not going to be able to consistently attack that ball as I would like with a nice loose pressure. And I can choose my trajectory a lot better. Again, that is the exact distance that I'm trying to hit. So you may be saying, James, that's all good and well, but how do I know it's the correct grip pressure? So for me, I always want to be within a certain window for every single club for different reasons, which we're going to get onto. I like to be within a three out of 10 to a five out of 10, certainly no more than a five out of 10, because that's when you start to really see the grip pressure getting tighter. That's when you really start to feel it in your forearms. You can even feel it in your upper arms and in your shoulders, and that severely restricts how you can hit the golf ball. Say if I now move into a mid iron, so I'm not thinking too much about getting a nice consistent movement here. I'm thinking how I can generate a consistent speed and how I can square that club face up every time, which Chris is going to talk you through a little bit later on in this video. But again, if I have too tight a grip pressure, do you see how I save that from going that divot then? Unbelievable. If I have too tight a grip pressure, I can't make a full turn. So again, I'm relying on trying to release the heck out of that club to get it up in the air. I made an okay effort at it there, but you'll see how short the swing was, how restricted the swing was, and how it just wasn't a very good takeaway. If I have, I'm gonna go on three out of 10 because for me, that's what feels right. I can then set the club as I want to. I can get this part of the grip here pointing at my chest, which for me is ideal. Then I can make a nice long backswing and release the club consistently every time. So again, three out of 10, set the club, and I'm taking nice shallow divots there, compressing the club and hitting the shot as I want to. So there's one club left that I want to talk to you about and it is the big dog. You may be thinking, well, I need to grip the driver tight to hit long shots because if I don't grip the driver tight, I'm swinging this really, really, really fast. I might let go of it. I might not release the club as I want to. I want to make sure that I have control over this driver. Now you're still going to have control over it, but we're still going to grip it nice and loose because if I don't grip this loose, you guessed it, because if I don't grip this relaxed, you know what, loose is the wrong term. I need to grip it in a relaxed manner because that is how I'm going to generate the speed and the power. So if I grip it really, really tight, I'm not going to set the club again and I'm just going to struggle to return this club as I would like. Nice and loose, set the club on the way back and let the club roll on the way through and you'll see there that's a nice draw down the middle of the fairway that's gone quite a long way as well i must have had a proper grip pressure there now guys chris is going to talk you through another couple of things in the grip which could severely be harming your game and stopping you get good at golf 
So guys, I'm gonna be covering grip now. We see different grips from different golfers, so we often see that some people might have a weak grip, some people might have a strong grip, and it might be mentioned to you, but nobody really explains it. So I want to go through that quickly with you now. I'm gonna first of all talk about a weak grip. So a weak grip is when we're gonna to start to see the left hand, your thumb might be on the left hand side of the grip, and we also see the right hand very much on top. You'll see there from down the line, my arms are already, my arm alignment is already very far to the left. You'll also see as I take that club away, it's going to open that club face a lot. So if you see this, if you're somebody who feel like, well, if I go back to this position, the club face is wide open. You'll see once I go to the top, that is open. And then when we return that to the ball, you see it's very hard for me to square that up. My wrists as such and my hands want to return to neutral, which would be there. That is neutral. That's what the club face is going to return like. And that's going to encourage you nice and easy to hit a lot of shots out to the right. Although I struck that well and it came out of relative the middle of the club, it's gone 20, 30 yards to the right. That's also lost me a lot of distance. So have a look at your grip. Is that, is that something that you see? Do you see your left thumb to the left-hand side of the grip? Do you see your right thumb all the way over there? If that is you, that might be why you are hitting that slice. And that is why you are struggling to get a consistent ball fly. So the opposite, guys, is when we get start to see your left hand over the top. We can see more than two knuckles. So we can see quite a lot. We can see the sign on your glove. We'll also start to see your right thumb, the right hand side of the lampkin. You can set up nice and square, but that's going to encourage a draw shot. That's going to, it's going to encourage a hook. It's going to encourage you to be closing that club face. If I do that, I can put a good swing on that again. But that is going to be turning to the left. That's going to be hooking left. It's going to be very hard to hold off with. Start to see them from people. What you will do if you are a hooker of the ball, James Robinson, is you'll start to put a little bit of forward press in there. You'll try and get your hands forwards to counteract that turn that is coming because of your grip. So we like to think neutral. If you can get to neutral, then yes, we need to get to there. What we'd like to see is when we take our grip, it's through the fingers, and we're gonna see two knuckles. So two knuckles on your left hand. We then bring the right hand in, and we start to see that your thumb just sits to the left of, perfect here with a lampkin, it sits just to the left of the logo. If you've got golf pride, if you've got no logo, it just wants to sit left of centre. So if we start to see this neutral grip, what it's going to allow us to do is, again, get this club into the positions that we like to see a little bit easier. It's going to make it easier for me to hinge, easier to get a full turn. And as we come down, it's going to allow me to start to release that club head on the way through. I'm not trying to hold it off. I'm not trying to guide it. I'm not trying to flip it over. We can just release that club naturally. That's going to then allow me to swing within myself and start to know what kind of movement I'm getting on that shot. I'm not going to see as much deviation. It still might move a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, depending on how you time that. But my misses are going to be coming much closer into the middle of the fairway. And that's what we want to achieve by getting that grip. So it is extremely important to get this set. So it is extremely important to sort out what kind of grip you have got. If you try to get a neutral grip, which I know there's a lot of people who don't have the time to practice, just know what your grip is going to do. So if you are somebody who grips it strong, let's get you aiming just down the right hand side of the fairway and just committing to that shot. If I aim a little bit further right with that kind of grip, we know that that will draw nicely back to the middle of the fairway or fingers crossed. It's going to be in play, guys. So the same if you have a weak grip, if you don't have time to practice and it does feel awkward and you don't want to commit to a grip change, we would highly recommend that because we like to see neutral golf, but then adjust for that. Again, if I go weak, I'm going to set up a little bit down the left-hand side, do my normal swing, and that's now fading back Masterclass. into the fairway. I know it's a rest. You can play all the shots, just can't play them on demand normally. Right, so think about that guys. If you want to get good at golf, we would like to see you getting a neutral grip. If you don't have the time to practice, just know what your tendencies are. Know what you are doing. You can adjust for that on the golf course and then commit to your shots and that should help you lower your handicap. And get good at golf. And get good at golf. See you again tomorrow.